Thank you for joining our brilliant franchise Q&A call. And we're going to answer some common questions that franchisees might have. And who's ever listening to this recording, you can join us in the future. We'll be doing once a month these Q&A so you could ask this live. So for now, we have some of our staff and friends that will be asking me questions that uh, will hopefully give you answers that you might be wondering about. So I would like to welcome anyone has a um, good question that I could talk more about what the potential franchisees are asking. Well, so I have a question. So I've been looking at different franchises um, and I'm working with a franchisee right now for in a different industry. But I'm curious, um, you know, two things that I like is massage and pizza, right? Yeah. <laughs> so how would I differentiate? Like, you know, there's so many franchises franchises out there there's there's probably thousands so how do i differentiate between everybody else and in, in brilliant massage and skin why would you go with uh spa versus pizza or just yeah I, you know i just don't know what franchise to go with so how how what should I use to determine what franchise I go with? Well, people already have a passion for and gravitate towards certain things. So I think that would be the first question I would ask. What would you enjoy to be doing every day? Do you enjoy being around health conscious people uh, in an alternative wellness field that is growing, such as massage therapy and skin care, anti aging or do you enjoy being around food like i personally don't enjoy cooking very much or being around food that much so managing like all these food doughs and sauces and cheeses like would not be my favorite thing to do so i would say you know is the best is to ask yourself what do you enjoy and what kind of people you want to be working with like i said i i personally really enjoy talking with our clients and our staff that are passionate about wellness because I am passionate about wellness and healthy lifestyle. Uh, but there might be people that are really passionate about uh, computers. So maybe computer franchise or IT franchise is better fit for them because we wouldn't want to someone get on board just for the money, just for the income. I think the passion is also a big thing that helps people succeed more than what if they're not passionate about it. Another question too that I have is, you know, in my area, there's, you know, there's spaces to buy, there's spaces to lease, there's um, spaces where I would be kind of sharing the space with other people. So what do you recommend franchisees look at when they're trying to find a space? So, well, that's the benefit of buying a business together with the franchise support system, because we would be there to help you decide whether the franchise is um, going to be um, good at that specific location. We can't like give you a definite answer that yes, you'll be 100% successful, but we can use our realtors and connections and experience to help you with those things. So you, you don't have to be alone just by yourself trying to figure all that out. Yeah. And for us, like for our, our franchisee right now, we have our first franchisee. We looked at the building in Stowe area, which, you know, she liked it, we liked it, but then eventually, when we talked to our professional realtor advice, we decided, you know, let's wait until something better comes along because we rather not rush, but do it right. So, th you know, there are sometimes announced like that and the more heads you have, the better it is, the support you have versus just trying to figure out on your own. Yeah, anyone else have a question? Well, hi, Yulita. Hi. I have a question about um, what initial investment should I expect and um, what does it typically cover? And also, 
I want to ask if you offer financing in your franchise. Okay. Yeah. So um, we have financing options that we work with different loan officers here in Vermont and also nationwide. We have access through also our franchise development company that we work with, which is Franchise Marketing Systems. They have in-house lender that can help. And also we recommend SBA has great loans that we have connection with SBA representatives that we can put in touch our franchisees. So while we are not a bank, we don't directly finance, but we have people that uh, we don't do like in-house financing, but we have people that we closely work with that have access to many, many different options with many different backgrounds, you know, from an okay credit score, we can make it work. And to a very good credit score. And what we're looking as far as investment, you know, a minimum money available should we would like to see 120,000 and up, but doesn't mean you have to have all that in cash, you can finance. So what we we would look that you at least have 30% of that cash requirement to for startup costs and any fit up or equipment costs. So you could have say four 40,000 and then you could finance the rest. So there is different options out there to make it happen. And a hydrofacial machine is a little more pricier. So that's something we can work with if someone's on a tighter budget to maybe introduce that later once they already have the cash flow going and the business. So there's different ways that we can flexible and work with the candidate to to get them opened and get some cash flow coming in and then maybe make some more additions, improvements later. Did that answer your question or did I miss something? No, yeah, yeah, great. It answered my question. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks for asking. How about, are you going to help us find a good spot for our franchise location? Uh, yeah, so um, like Nicholas was asking there. So actually, you know, I am personally also a real estate investor. So that gives me a little bit more understanding and advantage of helping with real estate of course, we would still utilize real estate agents and real estate professionals to get the best space. But I could even help someone. There's good, great programs through SBA, for example, 504 loan or 7A loan that has low interest and very favorable terms that they could, whether they want to just get a loan for business line of credit or whether they could even want to purchase the building. And if they purchase the building, I could teach them if they get more space than they need, they can sublet some of the rooms. So we're pretty flexible on different options, whatever people want to do, whether they want to lease or buy, we can help them and help their business succeed. Here I see we have Jason join us. Thank you for joining us. Did you have any question about Brilliant Massage and Skin franchise or someone has uh, more questions? Uh, I just have a question. Okay. How will you help me protect my territory from other brilliant franchisees? Like, for example, if I already franchise in a certain location, will you help me protect my territory from other brilliant franchisees? So we would have a dedicated area for you as uh, square mile footage. Depending on the density and population of your town, we would determine what is the nearest next one that we would allow. So maybe that's 20 miles, maybe that's five if it's like a more dense area in that perimeter of your store. So we would want to try to avoid cannibalization, you know, of course, but though, but look at it at this way that it's better than competitor brand opening up right next to you. So, you know, it shouldn't be too afraid to have spa opening, you know, maybe five miles because it creates more brand awareness. These clients can go back and forth between locations, more members. So I think, you know, it's helpful to have more stores in a t city area. Of course, you don't want them right next to each other. But, you know, if it's like five miles or it's not a bad thing, actually, it's a good thing. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think five. If I'm looking for a suitable location, would it be better to have a location that's kind of like in a big office park with like other, like a, you know, medical clinic or should it, should I try to find a location that's a freestanding building or what would you recommend? Yeah. Um, so I'm more of a fan for standalone buildings, if possible. That's not going to be possible in every area, every town, every city. Mm -hmm. If it's like more urban, like a big city like New York City, that's going to be pretty much impossible, right? But if it's like a more rural, more smaller town, I would say if, if, if a possible get like a standalone or maybe you could have two or three different businesses in there because you have more control over common areas over the way exterior looks what signs you can put in and not put in parking you know different things like that there is a uh, more freedom with uh, more like a smaller standalones so that's that's would be my recommendation Great. And the noise, you know, it's less noise because when you start to have multiple big buildings, tenants, you never know, like, when tenants decide to have, like, some music parties or something. And then, yeah, for that reason, too. Oh, like, restaurants can get really loud and, and smell, like, the foods, you know, you don't want to, like, smell pizza or, like, ribs when you're getting a massage. Okay, so I noticed that, so you have massages, facials, uh, waxing, and teeth whitening. What if I want to add some services? Is that allowed? Like, I want to put some nails. Do you allow those? Yeah, so that's a, also a very good question. So, for example, nails. So, we, we, we were looking in Stowe area, right? So, uh, like, the realtor told us over there that, hey, like, it's really lack of nails in this area. Would be nice if someone offered nails. Well, and I said, you know, well, really, in our system, we don't have nails right now. But maybe if there is enough space, maybe some someone could sublet a room that does nails so it's not technically like of our business but they like like a more like in the they have independent contractor that's doing nails maybe we would look at certain demographic and whether it makes sense for some areas maybe to add complementary service like that that maybe we could make an exception if they want to actually hire people that do those things of course it would be a little different fit up and you know these additional services that we don't necessarily have like the memberships right now or any like set up infrastructure for those it's not a definite no it's not a definite no ideally at first we would like people to start just with what's already there just to make sure they really got the current system successful and if they're doing well and they're capable of adding that additional portion that they want to manage by themselves that might not necessarily going to be implemented throughout all the brilliant massage and skin that's a possibility and suggestions always welcome would be from franchisees the ways to maybe improve or add things i've been hearing some people say well i maybe you can do like med spa things like laser hair removal things like that well currently we don't do those things but perhaps that could be an option at some point or certain locations i'm not sure same with nails so but um so it's not a definite no but to start with i think we would like you to follow the system yeah so are there any other questions those were very good questions so far i also was when i was talking to one of interested franchisees last week she was worried about the hiring and and the staff and having to pay staff but i told are that in this industry the way our system is set up is that it's commission based for staff providers so she could start like slower when it only like maybe less clients at the very beginning and then she would hire as things get busier she would hire more therapists because she was worried to you know, to have to pay people on staff when there is not enough clients. And I told her, you know, it's commission only. So you only pay them when there is a service performed. So that helps 
to grow without running risk of being much in the negative, you know, at the beginning, because at the beginning is mostly going to be, you know, your lease costs, your marketing costs, supplies, things like that. And then your labor cost is going to be mostly all commission, except like a receptionist. So I told her that I uh, got to be prepared for some of the, those upfront costs while you pick up the speed with the services. But as far as paying, having to pay service providers without them doing any, enough services, you know, that's not the case in this industry, which is one of the benefits as well with this industry that it can be commission plus tips. Um, as long, of course, long the co co total commission has to be more than minimum wage on their hours worked, which is always says is usually four times five ends up being four to five times more, especially once they um, have at least some clients. If I wanted to open up a franchise, say on the West Coast, I know that your current locations are based on the East Coast. Would I, if I need support with the time difference, would that present a, a problem? Because, you know, five o'clock on the, the West Coast is eight o'clock on the East Coast. No, that would not be a problem. I received an inquiry from someone in California, from a broker actually. And, you know, we currently are not registered to sell in certain states, including California. So we are focusing more on the East Coast, Northeast, and going all the way to Florida. But if it was the right candidate, we would register with that state, whether it's on West Coast or Midwest. So that wouldn't be a problem because we are used to be open seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And including myself, I'm always usually able to answer calls during those times, messages and things like that. So that would not be a problem. And as our franchise grows, we would have territory managers that would be dedicated specifically to certain areas that are further away like that. Okay, any any other questions? All right. Well, if no more questions, then we could wrap up this call. I think we got some good, good ones. I'll give it another minute if anyone uh, comes up with anything else. And we will do this again next month. There's also, we're happy to send uh, brochures we have to learn more. And then we would send FTD with our financial information for serious candidates. So if anyone interested to see that, please reach out. We'll set up another private call with you. And yeah, hope you have a brilliant day. Thanks a lot for joining the call. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.